Hi, welcome back all of you. Nana here, and then we are into the next day's program on this uh, fusion uh, procurement implementation. Today, we are going to see a very excellent concept called consigned inventory. So let me go on and share the screen. Now. What do you call? So before I log in, what happens? I have one document which I would like to upload it now. Find that drive dot google.com so let me upload a document in this place see <laughs> cm training is there so here uh apart from the basics what happens i have got one more document i will now make one directory you know i will now upload the directory itself so click on it i will now go there so this was missing actually i have not uploaded it actually over there so i will now go to cm training so we have one document it's called uh, your uh, consigned process actually the one so first of all i will now make a directory here like click on the new on the folder right i will now say additional uh, docs additional training docs we can say i'm making enough i don't know i made a new directory actually so i will not take a copy of the consigned process and then put it on the additional docs. So whenever I get anything new, what happens, I'll be uploading it. So this one, I will now upload this into your CSCM training. I will now give a folder upload. <clears throat> I will now go there. So click on it. So CSCM training. <laughs> so we have what additional uh, training docs. So whenever I get anything new, I'll be uploading it into the directory. In the new ones, which are there. And that will be getting uploaded over to the directory. So that will be coming as a additional training document. So if you go there and then open it up, you will now find this one consigned process. So I'll be uploading any additional training docs into this place. Actually. As of now, it's okay. It's only one document. And then as and when it comes in. So you'll now go and then have a look at it. If I click on it, you'll see what are the consigned process. I double click on it. So it is nothing but a just in time concept. Suppose let us say, I want, let us say, I'm not going to manufacture the monitor. So for which I need picture tubes. So uh, uh, if I go and then order him, what happens, the picture tube will be su supplied to us. And then they will be remaining in the raw material stores. So only when I get a sales order for the monitor, I will be drawing it from the raw material stores and then manufacture the monitor. But if I, if the order has come today, and then if I order for the picture tubes, it will not take one week time for me to get the material actually from the supply. So there is a lead time. So the lead time is heavy. And so what happens if we get to wait and then we cannot meet the customer's need actually on time. So this is nothing but the consigned inventory is nothing but a what's called your just-in-time concept. So what we do is we will now make one of the suppliers as a consigned supplier. And then he will now agree for a payment terms actually. And then once when he supplies it, we will now make a small go down within our battery limit. This is a battery limit of our company. So we will now make a shed or something like that for them. So they will now supply it into the shed. And then this is known as a consigned inventory. It is normally an expense of inventory. We will now keep it over there. And then he will now monitor the stock with his own staff, actually. He will now put his own girls. And then they will now keep it on the rack and then keep it over there. So they, they are now supplying 1,000 quantities over here. So it belongs to him. He becomes the owner of it. Only thing is what? I will not pay anything to him at all on payment. So whenever I need it, I'm going to draw it from the expense of inventory and then I will not transfer to regular stock and then I will not create a consumption advice. So whatever is consumed is only going to be paid. Again. So that means what? We are having ready-madely material available within our battery limit, but we are not the owner. The supplier is the owner actually. So it is an excellent just-in-time concept. So whenever you need it, you can draw it immediately and then you can start to use in the production actually. <clears throat> so in our company, we have one physically a Lakshman Reka there. We have drawn a Lakshman Rekha and then we will now drag it tara, 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 and then we will now keep it and then we will now keep it in this place. So on the same sub inventory itself, we will be transferring it. We will not be moving it anywhere else. So whatever has gone, whatever has crossed the Lakshman Rekha, it is mine actually. Like what happens if Sita crosses the Lakshman Rekha, she is mine. So likewise, what happens, whatever crosses the Lakshman Rekha, it is our stock actually. And then once when you transfer it, then we will now run the consumption advice. And then once when the consumption advice is created, then what happens? It will now ready. And then we will now run the pay on the right. Once when you run it, what happens? It will be creating an invoice automatically. It's called ERS and use invoice. 
we are going to use. Upon use, we are going to make a payment. And then the invoice is created in the payables, and then we will not make a payment to the supplier. It's an excellent concept. So, but uh, supplier will agree because he is not going to supply, and then only after 15 days' time, let us say, we are going to what happens to draw it based upon our sales orders. The sales orders coming, then only what happens, we will not draw. So, yes, to wait till we do it. But what happens if we give that constantly, I will now draw approximately around 5,000 items in a month or something like that in a quarter, if we give an assurance, then he will not be ready to be a consigned supplier because a huge amount of water is going to come over a period of three months or what happens, one month or whatever it is. So during this month, what happens, we will not negotiate with them. And then if the number of consumptions are going to be more, there will be even a, what happens, a competition among the consigned suppliers actually. And then you can choose who is the best actually. So this is an excellent just-in-time concept where we we buy the material, we stock it in his uh, area, you know, fine, in, a, in, a, in a tent or something like that, in an area where we will now give it to him. So it will be stocked over there. He becomes the owner. And then only upon transfer, we become the owner. Whatever is transferred, what happens, we become the owner. And then whatever is transferred, we will not get a consumption advice. Upon which, what happens, it will become. So this we are going to see now, fine. The beautiful just-in-time concept. So we need not have to wait. The, normally, what happens, the lead time is the biggest problem. So they will not say it will not take one week for you to supply the sales order. The customer says that whatever I want the monitor today itself. So, but manufacturing facilities, everything is there, but raw material is not there. So, in such cases, what happens? You can you go for the consignment. Sale. And most every company is going for the consignment inventory because it is a very cheap process because we don't pay anything at all what we don't use actually. We pay only for what you use. So this is called what? Pay on use. No, fine. It's also pay on use, fine. So the ER as an invoice, ER as an use invoice will be created upon this. So we're going to see about how to do this now. Go back to and then we'll log in. I'm not logging in the SC, I'm not fine. We have to go to a PRC login and then uh, we have to do it. No, fine. Keep on it. I will not go there. I will not go to the PRC login. <coughs> so I will not go there. So I'm an ASC and login now, fine. So I will not go to the PRC login actually. I will not go to the tools. I will not click on the tools and then I go to the security console. So let us now query one of the PRC login. <coughs> So go to the users and then I will now say PRC 22. Let's say PRC 22 is the one. Fine. Enter in PRC 22. Click on it. Here, what happens? The PRC all has got everything on the uh, the procurement. And then here I will now edit and then what happens? I will now add the inventory also. Click on add. I will now add the inventory also. It's called OU SCM role. So if you add it, this has got everything on the inventory actually. These are all the ready-made roles which are available in the vision of that will not be available for your normal thing. It will not be available for you in your uh, uh, employee on the on the client's instance, actually. Only on the Oracle University's instance, you have this ready-made role. Thank you, Donato. Okay, no added. So we have got these two roles identified. The PRC all and then OESCM role will now facilitate to do all the activities on inventory and purchasing. So click on save and close, and then we'll now reset the password also for PRC twenty-two. So click on the reset password. Go there. I don't know whether I will not reset the password. So the password is now getting reset. Now if I click on reset password. The password is reset. So we have the password. Now if I click on everything. If I click on that. Now, once when you made any changes on the security console, have a habit of what? Running in the import user role now. Run the import user role. So that will now sync every data. If I click on the tools, and then go to the what's called the schedule process. We will not So whatever setups you have made on the security console, they will all be synced into the transaction system. Fine. Click on the schedule new process. Fine. Click on It's called the import fine percentage fine. User percentage fine. Role percentage. Then give it Import user role. So click on OK. <laughs> click on submit. So we are now running the import user role. So it will now run fine. And then afterwards, run the LDAP also. Fine. So these two concurrents will now make everything perfect as far as your training is concerned. Fine. Go to the schedule new process and then go there. And then run what LDAP also. Run the LDAP. Go there. Retrieve LD transfer. Fine. Go there. Fine. Go there. So this is also your own. So these two concurrents will now ensure because they are all force syncing actually. We are now force syncing all the setup data into the transaction systems actually. So these two concurrents will now guide you in doing this. So retrieve will have changes. No word. So import is not running. So retrieve will not start to run after some time. We are waiting, waiting for it. Now we will know what happened. These two running. So it will now, uh, it will now, around five minutes, it will not take. In the meantime, what happens? It will go there and then log in directly. 
Nagoda. So click on it. PRC22, we are going to log in. Sign out and sign in, and then we'll know log in as PRC22 now. Right? Click on it. So go there. Yes, sort. <coughs> PRC22.student. And then we'll log in. So we are now logging in as PRC22. So first we'll now make the PRC22 as a procurement agent. He must be a buyer actually. So only when he's a buyer, whatever you can do it on fine, click on save. We'll now go there, click on it. We'll now go to the manage procurement agent, fine, click on the setup and maintenance, and then we'll now make him as a buyer actually. So click on it. And then you go to search, you know, fine, click on search. And then I will now say manage percentage fine, procurement percentage fine, agent percentage. So we go and then make him as a, a procurement agent actually. So manage procurement agents. So click on plus. <clears throat> this is the US one business unit we are working upon now. Agent is what? Student. Fine. Comma PRC 22. So it's the last name, comma first name. The PRC 22. The last name, comma first name. This is the way you do it. Now if I click on it and then go there. It's going to be US one business unit and the default one is okay. Fine. I'll now give full access to all of the agents' documents because in the normal company, you won't have too many procurement agents available. Now, fine. So, everybody, every agent can uh, do the activity on the other agents' documents actually. So, now give a full access to everywhere. Now, click on drop down and then make it a full access. So, click on save and close by which what happens it is not done now. <clears throat> now, say so you know, procurement agent also. Now, we are going to create a consigned supplier. So first of all, what happens is before you create a supply, what happens, we have to ensure that uh, the approvals are bypassed actually. Go to actions and then go to the offerings. We are now going to ensure that the approvals are bypassed for the supply creation actually. And then go there, go to the procurement. You go to the procurement and then click on the opt-in features and then we are now going to bypass the approvals for this. Opt-in features, you're going to go to that. So the opt-in features, what happens, you're going to bypass all the approvals actually. Mm -hmm. So opt-in feature is the one. <clears throat> so in the opt-in features, we are going to bypass the approval. Right? Click on the opt-in features. So go there. You'll now go to the suppliers area, fine, and then click on then click on the edit icon on the futures. Click on the edit icon on the futures. So click on the edit icon on the futures. And then there, from there, what happens? You go there. So click on the edit icon on the futures. And then here, what happens? You'll go there. Approve internal changes on the supplier profile. There are five or four uh, activities that I have. I click on the enable. I click on the edit icon. So out of these four, we can enable anything for the approvals, actually. Fine. Now I will not disable everything now. Fine. Not disable everything. So no approval is required for us for making a quick now. Fine. Depending upon the need, we can enable the approvals, actually. So now no approvals are required. All the approvals are bypassed, actually. All the approvals are bypassed. So we can very well directly go and then quickly create a supplier. So all the approvals are bypassed. Fine. Click on seven close. All the four are not on. Fine. Click on them. And then whenever you make such a major change, have a habit of what? Logging out and logging in for the changes to be sensed with the transaction systems, actually. So there is a customary practice because it takes some time for the system to sense the changes actually. But logging out and logging in will now force change everything. So there is the best manner. So click on it up and then go there and then force change everything on the transaction system sector. So keep it as a good habit now because we want results immediately. In reality, what happens is you'll be doing the supply creation tomorrow or day after tomorrow. At the time, we would have got synced actually. But now... Uh, with the import user role as well as the LDAP also, we are syncing it. And then any changes also, you are syncing it to the transaction systems because we want results immediately. Fine, click on it and then come out of it now. And then go there. And then click on it and then sign out and sign in. Go there. So sign out. <clears throat> that sign in. <clears throat> 
now we will now go ahead and then create the supplier actually we will go there i will now go to the procurement and click on the procurement and then here whatever there no more what suppliers i will go to the suppliers i will now create a supplier actually so click on it and then we will now go ahead and then create a supplier actually click on it and then here what happens you go there go to create supplier click on create supplier you are now going to create a supplier i will now say let us say I will now say uh, A01 underscore uh, cons supplier, consign supplier. Before creating the supplier, what happens? We have to do one more thing. Okay, click on cancel. We have to go there and then we will now go to the configure procurement business function. And we have to set up this thing. Click on it. We will now go there. Go to the setup and windows. And then we will now go to the configure procurement business function. And then we will now set up certain things for the consigned inventory actually. So click on it. So click on search. And I'll now go there. Configure procurement business function. So configure procurement business function is the one when I click on the hyperlink of it. Then go there. I will now say it's a use one. Is the one. Go there, click on OK. <clears throat> so here's one of the business unit. You know, choosing the use one business unit. So here, what happens? You go down. In the bottom, we have the consigned terms. No, fine, expand it. So here, what happens? The aging is the onset point. When it is going to start the age, actually. So let us say it is a shipment. Let us say the, the supplier is now supplying from Simla. Simla, it will not take some days now. So the moment you enter the shipment date on the ASM, there is, one called, there is a concept called advanced shipment notice. On the advanced shipment notice, is saying that I know shipped today. So from that date onwards, what happens? You know, say it will not start to age, and then after seven days' time, you are going to make a payment. So you are not shipping it today, and then from Simla. And then it will not reach our premises after seven days' time. Then what happens? Uh, the consigned thing will not become eligible for a payment after seven days. So you can do it. If we are using ASN actually, only the advanced shipment notice will be having the shipping date actually. Otherwise, what happens? We normally use only reserve date. <clears throat> and then in the reserve date, what happens? Uh, uh, he, he is saying he has already supplied this now. The metal has been supplied and then the consigned inventory it is now lying there for more than 15 days actually. Now there is a requirement. We got a sales order for the monitors and then we are going to draw the picture tubes. Like today we are drawing it. And some 20 numbers we are drawing it. So the supplier says what? As and when you transfer the regular, I want a payment today itself because I'm already waiting for more than 15 days actually because you're not consumed it. His, require, his requirement is really genuine actually. So upon transfer to regular, what happens? You have to pay. But here, what happens here? It says what? If you put in then zero days, it is not accepting it at all. I don't know why it's so. Whereas the e it accepts. In the e-business suit, what happens? The zero is accepted actually. Here it is not accepting it. So it is accepting a minimum of one day only. One day it is accepting it. I will do one thing. I will not see whether 0 0.1 it is accepting it or not. That is also not accepting. Integers are not allowed. Enter whole number only. Wow, it is the biggest problem. So, so one full day I will do it. So today if I draw it, if I draw it, what happens? I can create a consumption advice only tomorrow. There may be some profile options which will not allow you to draw it today. But I don't know how to do it now. Fine, if anybody knows about how to make it a zero. Because many, many suppliers will say, the moment you draw it, you make a payment. Because we are already waiting for, say, 15 days or 30 days, we are already waiting for. And then they are all lying in your area only. It is my material. You are not paid anything at all. So how to do it? We can very well do it in EBS, whereas here is not allowing at all. This is the biggest problem. I don't know how to do it now. And then we can even consumption advice frequencies what daily. We can even make it daily. And then this is for all organizations delivered. All organizations. So these are the setups you are going to make on the configure procurement business function. This will not default onto all the newly created supplier actually. When a newly created supplier is coming, what happens? Is these consumption consignment terms will be defaulting. So click on save and close the top. So the configure procurement business function is now fully set. Click on that. We will not go there and then we will not create a supplier actually. Click on it. Click on the form icon. It is a consigned supplier. Okay, click on it. So click on the form icon. And then you go to the procurement and then click on the supplier. We are now going to create a consigned supplier actually. So go there, right? Consign supplier is the one going to account. I will now go there, click on it. I will know what happens, create supplier. So let me get the supplier actually. I'm going to supply. Here, what happens, I will now go there. So the, the thing is what? I will now say A01. I will now say cons underscore sub underscore one. The consign supplier. It will be a real name actually. So we are now only for a training purpose. We are giving this name. Now I click on the spin off this. The tax organization is going to be corporation. Now I'm going to it. And then click on create. Now the cons sub is now getting created. Now I click on create. A01 concept is now getting created actually. We click on create. We're going to the next page actually. <clears throat> so 
to go there. We are not giving anything. Go there. So in the payment terms, what happens? You have a habit of what giving a check payment because uh, the check payment is fully configured in the vision. Actually, you can even make a payment. Okay, select it and then click on the tick mark on this. Okay, click on the tick mark. Then we're coming from so the tick mark has been given. So nothing else will be given over there on the main page. Now, click on it. So the payment terms is very important. Thing. Give us a so the profile has been done with the payment terms of check actually. You go to the address area and click on the address area. So in the address area, I give a plus now. If I click on plus, and then we are going to create an address actually. We are now going to create an address actually. <coughs> so go there. So one second. See. Uh, what do you mean wrong? The address, what happens? You go there. A01. I will not say cons. Country is United States, fine. So for the training purposes, what happens? You use United States, that will be working very perfectly. United States. And then go there. The postal code 10020, and then give it a tap. And that will be pitching a fine. And then it will not fetch up the remaining fields. And then the address line one, I will not say A01, fine. Address line one. The address line one is there. Fine. 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 That line one is that thing. I will not enable ordering and remit to fine ordering and remit is enabled. This is for purchase orders, this is for the payables actually. And then don't put the tick mark here. If you put the tick mark only RFQ on bidding is possible, ordering and remit is not possible. Fine. So don't put all the three tick marks. Only the first two tick marks has to be good. The third is automatically included. Ordering and remit will now enable the RFQ and bidding also. Fine. Sourcing is also automatically enabled. We'll not go there and then what happens? Go there. We'll not give address. Now. Fine. We'll not say what happens. We'll not say some address now. Uh, e01. Uh, at the rate gmail.com. So, some, other, some dummy address I'm giving it, right? email address I'm giving it. It will be reality. In reality, it will be a character. So, click on it. So, the address is now created. And go there, click on it. And then, whatever they go there, click on save and close. Now, fine. So, in this place, what happens? I will not give a save and close. The address is now created. Now, we will now go to the contacts and then get a contact actually. So, once the address is created, what happens? They go there. And then you go to the contacts now. After profiling an address, what happens? You go to the contacts and then we'll not get a contact now. Click on plus now. You've got to get a contact. Mm -hmm. So for the simplicity purposes, what happens? I'm going to make as a1.n1. So the username will be a1.n1. The first name is what? A1. And then last name is n1. So the system creates a username as what? First name dot last name. Here also, what happens? The employee's name, fine. a1.n1 at the rate gmail.com. So this is the employee's email ID, actually. The contact person's email ID. You can go there. Come on. And then go there. Good actions and go to select that. We'll now add the address. So this is now sitting on this address. You may have multiple addresses. Now only one address is coming. Fine, click on apply. And okay, fine. Go there. It's not done. So A1.n1 is not there again. So click on the create user for this. Now fine. So once when you give a user account, what happens? User account will be getting created. So for which what happens? You must have a supplier portal license. Remember. Otherwise, what happens? It will not be coming at all. So this is not done now. Fine. So the contact is created. He's now sitting on our address. He's having a user account also. So click on save and close. So the contact is now completed. Right. This much is sufficient. Now I click on the seven close. So the contact is completed. So after having created the contact, we go to the site and then we'll now create a site actually. <coughs> so go to the And then afterwards, what happens? We go to the go to the sites. So if I click on the sites. So go to the sites. If I click on the sites and then click on plus. This plus symbol will be coming only when you are a procurement agent, actually. If I click on plus. And then only when you are a procurement agent, the plus symbol will be coming. If I click on plus. So go there. Drop down the address, the address will be coming. And then the address will be getting default as site. I will not override the site name, actually. I will not say the site one, actually. So once when you give a save, what happens? The remaining tab bridges will be enabled. If I click on it. So click on save. What happens? You can now see the remaining tab is there. Now I go to the purchasing, and then since he is now, what happens? Uh, we are now enabling what the pay on use actually. So enable the pay on use. Right? It is not a pay on use. It is a pay on use. Right? The aging onset point is what I will now say reset, and then the aging period is going to be zero. Right? Zero is not accepting again. There also is not. Accepting. It has to default. It is not defaulting. I don't know why. Fine. No, I think it is not accepting it. Okay, you know, see whether it accepts or not. So if the aging period is zero, it will be great actually. You know, see. And the consumption of frequency is what daily. And then here, the summary is what all organizations. So you now see if the zero accepts it or not. Invoice summary level is going to be pay site actually. So go there. So click on save. We'll now see whether the zero is accepted or not. And click on save. Click on save. If it is accepted, it will be great actually. Good is accepted it actually. So zero is accepted. So today itself, we can very well create the consumption advice actually. It is on pay on use actually. And pay on use. Hmm. 
So invoice number will do that, fine. So everything is now done, fine. So we are not done on this thing, fine, the purchasing area. So it is on pay on use, is it? And then zero aging period. And then you know, invoice number level is pay side actually. So you go to the receiving, go to the invoicing area, if I click on the invoicing area, is accepting here. There it is not accepting it. It has to default, it is also not defaulting. I don't know why it's so. I don't know what the US dollars. And then the payment currency is what dropped down and then make it the US dollars. So these two things you make it down. And then afterwards, what happens? You go to the site assignments and then let me assign it. Fine, click on it. I will not click on plus now. I will not give my US one now. US one. So the site assignment is a must now. Fine, click on it. The bill to all of the US one. And everything is coming. Ship to Seattle. Seattle is the one. I will not put it. Seattle is the one. The bill to location is also Seattle. Seattle. So everything is not enough. Fine, click on it. So we have done everything. The remaining will be done by payable steam. Now. The payable steam will be doing the liability distribution, all the distribution accounts, everything they will do it now, fine. We need not over it. So on the site assignment is very important now, fine. Your client view and then the um, bill to view as well as your bill to and ship to location. They will all default into your POs actually. You know, fine, click on seven close by which what happens that we are now given the site assignments actually. Site assignments have been done. Now, click on it. When everything is done. So, profile, address, contacts, and sites. Qualifications for supplier qualification. That, that, is not, that will be covered during supplier qualification training. So, click on 7 close by which what happens. Your A01 concept one is not fully ready. Now, let us now go there and create an item. Open, click on it. Let us now go there click on it. Let us now create an item actually. You know what to create an item. Let us now go there and then create an item. Fine. Let us now go to the product management. Let us now go to the product management. And then go to the product information management. And then create an item actually. <laughs> product management. No more than product management. Oh God, I'm still fine. So product management, and then I go to the product information management, and then will not create an item actually. So click on it. Will not create an item actually. So click on it. Click on create now, and then I'm not going to work on the zero 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 or wait. That is your master talk now, fine. Zero, zero, zero. We are now working on the visions one now, fine. Click on it. And then whatever item class is coming, it's okay. If you need to go, it's okay. Fine. Click on okay. Accept it. Accept all the comments. So there is a warning coming in because of the PDH setup. So the PDH setup is not correct. Fine. Click on it. The product data hub is the one which is not giving it. Fine. Click on it. So go there. I will now say it's a A01 underscore cons underscore item one. This is the item. So the item, fine. Go there. Come on. Take a copy of it. And then put in the description of it. In the description. Go down now. And then here, what happens? Everything is okay now. Fine. All other things are okay. Fine. So you go to the specifications straight away. You go to the specifications. And then we'll not give a list price. Go to the purchasing. We'll not give a list price. <clears throat> so the purchasing list price is about ten dollars. Giving it. So afterwards, what happens? You go to the planning area. So if uh, the planning is now going to dr drive this consigned inventory, what happens? You go there and then make the consigned as yes. This is only for the planning edge, not for the normal ones. They make the consent. So if planning is involved, if you have a supply planning or a demand planning or a sales and operations planning, and if you are going to create a consigned uh, what happens, orders or anything like that, then make it as there will be sensed with a planning module. So the normal ones it will not require. So go to the associations and then what happens? You go on and associate with the child or no point. So go to the associations. What actions are going to select that? So let us now associate with the child or 001. <clears throat> child or point. Select it and then click on apply. And then click on that. So let's get assigned to the child or no fine. So 0, 0, 0, 0001 is there. Fine. Go there. So click on save and close now. Fine. Which what happens? The A01 cons item one is now created actually. Now complete the creation of the cons item one. Item is now created. Now we are now going to create a consignment agreement now. We will now create a consignment agreement. Fine. So click on the home icon. The top. We'll not go there. I will now go to what? Go to the procurement. Go to the procurement. And then I go to the orders now. Fine. I'm now going to create a consignment agreement for this. So a consignment agreement is a must actually. Click on it. Click on it. Go there. <laughs> and then here, what happens? You go to that. What happens? The create agreement. In the create agreement, we will now create a consignment agreement actually. So click on it. You are not going to create a consignment. Drop down and then choose the consignment agreement. So choose the consignment agreement. Go to it. So what is the supplier? And go there. Click on it. The A01. Go there. The con supplier. So click on it. It will be coming over. Click on it. So supply side, everything is coming. So you must enter a positive number of click on it. Okay. Supply contact is so and so now. I click on it. So click on create. Now I got us fine click on it. So what happens? You click on create. You're going to create a what happens? A consignment agreement actually. <coughs> aging period days is required because the document specifies an aging onset point actually. So that means what? 
it is the error actually so it is not accepting it at that zero at all <laughs> this is the biggest problem right i don't know how to do it if i click on cancel it's not accepting it so there itself it will give an error actually but it does not give an error so go that click on it i will not go to the place and then whatever they will not change it to one no. so aging onset point is reset but it is zero days zero days is not accepted actually i will not go that click on it i thought that it will accept it will i can you know i can do the demonstration only tomorrow no fine the consignment agreement consumption advice i can do it only tomorrow no. i will not go to the manage suppliers and then query process e01 and then click on search no fine click on search and search for it and then we will not edit it no fine click on it no fine edit it and then make the aging period no fine i will not go there i will not what i will go there i will not go to the sites area in the sites area i will not edit the site and then i go to the purchasing no fine click on the purchasing and then make it to what zero is not accepted even though you is accepting it well and a grading a purchase order is not accepting it actually <clears throat> but supply will ask for a payment immediately you know fine because you have not consumed it why don't you make a payment today i don't know how to do it now fine there may be some profile option which will be controlling it but i'm not aware of it now fine click on second place no no click on it will not go there and then create a consumption agreement so click on the home icon and then go there and then we'll not create a consumption and bring bring the point i will not go to the purchase orders fine go there i will not create a consumption agreement so go to the create agreement so consigned agreement is the one i am going to create now if i click on it drop it down i will say consignment agreement uh, consignment agreement is the one so click on it the supply is what a01 so go there supply site so previously here itself some error came now if i click on create now no error will be coming because we have got a given a positive number on the aging period now so it has to age for one day and then then only it becomes eligible for a payment actually So click on create. We are now creating it. So go there. So it's not coming. So go there. So you can even enter an agreement amount. Fine, go there. And then I will say thousand dollars. We are agreeing it or ten thousand dollars. We are agreeing it. Fine, click on it. And then go there. Minimum release amount is okay. Not required at all. Go there. Go there. Go there. Go there. So go there. So here, what happens? The terms and then the notes attachments are exactly like a BPA CPM. The BPA and CPA we already seen. About the terms as well as the uh, whatever notes and attachments, fine. The notes of player, note receiver, and then attachment document, fine. Everything is the same. So here we have got one more extra thing, fine. Click on the consignment terms. Click on the consignment. Here whatever is now coming as result, and then for the suppliers, uh, one the aging period is coming as this one day, and then billing close cycle date. Whatever I will not say it today. So today is the date. So today is the date. So once when the billing close, when the billing close closes today, it becomes eligible for a payment actually. But again, because of one whatever we can now make a payment only tomorrow. So tomorrow. I will not create the consumption advice today. If I create it, nothing will be coming. And then the supplier we enable the pay on use that is coming over here. Now, default lines as a consignment line actually. So click on plus, and then I will not put the item over here. So which is the item? I will not go there. And then put the item over here. And then say E zero one point. I will not give a tab. So we have got item. We will go on that. So go there. So uh, we will not say the price is going to be ten. So is the consignment agreement not going to go there? It will not have any quantities at all. Going to the orders. Expiration date is there. Can put it otherwise leave it as such. So go there. So the consignment item is there in the agreement actually. Fine, the agreement will go there. Right, click on it. And then what happens? You go to the controls. So I click on the controls. So in the controls, what happens? You'll be having all the controls. You go to the controls. The controls. What happens? You put the these three tick marks. No, these three tick marks are very important one. No, no. So go there. Click on it. And then. The contract terms is only for the contracts. Leave it as in the mind. This is the procurement contracts. You'll be seeing it later. Click okay, on it and then click on save. So the consignment agreement is now five to two seven eight is not made now. Five to two seven eight is not getting ready now. Click on it. I will not go and have a look at it. But who is going to approve? Okay, click on the manage approvals. It must be automatic now. Fine. If somebody has modified it, you will not bring it to automatic action. So we are now going to what manage approvals. Click on manage So go there. Application developer is there. That means it's automatic. Fine. Click on submit. So five to two seven eight is now getting submitted for approval. Actually, it will be getting approved automatically. So five to two seven eight is now getting approved. So against this consumption agreement, I am now going to create a consigned order. Actually, <laughs> so and what happens? We have already what in EBS we have a ASL BPA combination. <clears throat> so this is now replaced by a consigned order now in future. <laughs> This is a prerequisite for creating a consigned order actually. <laughs> so we are going to create a consigned order. So for which order was the consum consigned agreement must be in place, then we can create an order actually, referencing this five two seven eight. 
to us. There's no submit for approval. We'll now go there and have a look at it, whether it is approved or not. This is the only automatic thing. So go to the what? You go to the manage agreements and then have a look at it. You go to the manage agreements and then have a look at it. 522278. 522278 is the one. Fine. You go there and then make a search. Don't click on search. I'm showing you that it has to come as an open actual. <clears throat> so it's not coming as a pending approval. If you click on the hyperlink of it, what happens? It'll know the approval process is now currently unavailable. So it's not taking some extra time actually for what happens doing it now. So we have to wait for it. And that in the meantime, what happens? We'll now go there. I will now right click and then duplicate. We will now, what happens? We will now. Reset the password for a1.n1. That is the, what's called uh, the supplier user's login. <coughs> a1.n1 is the supplier user's uh, username now. So click, on it. so click on the home icon. I go to the tools now. I go to the tools. So go to the tools now. Go to the tools. You go to the tools. Go to the tools and then go to the security console. Right there, what happens? We'll now query the username a1.n1. So we'll now reset the password and go to the users. So go to here, what happens? We'll now say a1.n1 is the one for the entry. So click on the hyperlink of it and then we'll now reset the password so that what happens? We can very well what happens, go on login as a user. Supplier can very well log in. So supply is username, you know, we're going to it. So we can very well log in with this user actually. Okay. And then we will now go to another browser and then log in as this one. And this is username A1, first name dot last name is the username. We'll now go there. We will now log in with this user from some other browser actually. We'll take off it. Let me go to the edge browser and then we will now log in with this. Paste it to an entry, go inside. Is a one dot n one. So you know, logging in with this user actually is a supplier user. And remember, the URL is the same both for us as well as supplier user also. So both of them are having the same user actually. You know, logged in. So if you click on the bell icon, so you can see the password reset is coming from that. Okay, fine. These are all something you can ignore these things. And then click on the home icon. So click on the home icon. In the home icon. What happens? You go to the supplier portal. Fine, click on the supply bottle. Now he can very well see our agreement which has been just approved. So you go to the manage agreements, go to the agreements. So this is the area where you can go to the manage agreements. I'm going to go and then have a look at it. So go there. So agreement number is what? Uh, do you have any agreement number? Fine. 522 So the agreement, if it is approved, it will be coming with it. It's not taking some time. It's not approved. Now go to our system and click on it. I'm going to space. Now go to the manager agreements and then here whatever goes in and then make a search. So once it is open, what happens? It will be reflecting on the supplier's portal actually. There's no still pending approval only if I click on it. So since uh, nobody has what happens uh, used these approvals for a pretty long time, it is not taking a longer time to what happens uh, uh, get synchronized. No, fine, click on search. No, what happens? If you click on it, what happens? It should not say no, this uh, approval information is currently unavailable. It's not taking a longer time for them to initiate the approval actually. The approval is basically a workflow process. So that process is now getting initiated and then it is not yet done actually. It's not taking a long time. No, this, yeah, action details are not available because the approval process is being prepared actually. Now, previously, some other error came. Now, some, some other error, some, that means what? The approval is now started and the workflow has started effective on it. And then in the meantime, what happens? You go there and then make a search, you know, click on search. And then if it is approved, what happens? It will be appearing over here now. In the meantime, what happens? You go there. I will not have to go there. Right click and then duplicate. We'll now go on and have a look at the stock. No, thank you. So we're going to have a look at the stock. So we can very well look at the stock by going to the supply chain execution and have a look at it. Thank you. We'll now click on the home icon and then I go to the supply chain execution. No, thank you. We'll now go to the supply chain execution. So supply chain execution is the one. Then go to the supply chain planning and then supply chain execution has to come now. Fine, go supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management. So I go to the inventory management, not the new one. Fine, this will be with the Redwood shows one now. Fine, don't go this for the older one. <clears throat> so you click on it and then here, what happens? You go there. I will not go on that. Look at it. It's on 001 or it's coming automatically. Fine, click on the manage item quantities. And then if you put an item over here, now I click on it. The A01 and then give a tap. 
the whole item will be coming. Thank you, Consorch. There will not be any stock at all. So in the meantime, what happens? You go to the manager agreements and then how long is it? Click on search only. <coughs> so click on search and then click on search. Okay. So now what happens? It is open actually. So if you go to the supplier portal and then make a search, now click on the supplier portal also, what happens? It will not show the agreement actually. So you know, the supplier can very well see this agreement. If you click on the hyperlink of it, you can now see which item has been ordered as a consigned agreement actually. The consigned agreement. So it's not showing you. So the consignment terms, everything you can see. Now, against this, we are now going to create what? 52278, we are now going to create a purchase order actually. So, for, uh, we'll go there, click on so, click on done. The agreement is not done now. Fine, click on it. We'll go on and create our consignment order now. <laughs> so, go to the create order. So, we are now going to get a consignment order. Okay. It's not a purchase order, it is a consigned order actually. Uh, complex, complex. It is a consignment order. So, choose the consignment order. So 52278 will be referred automatically. Now, fine, the supply is what? A01. I will not go there. Click on it. Consign supplier. The supply side, everything is coming. Fine, click on create. So the consignment order will be automatically referencing the 52278. Now, fine, click on create. It will be referencing the 52278. So the consignment order will be referencing this. Fine, go there. So go there. So the agreement number will be coming once when you put the item over here. Fine, click on <coughs> So go there. Click on everything is okay. Fine, go there. Click on and then here, automatically go there. And then click on the lines and then I'll add it. I'll click on plus. And then I'm going to add line. So the one the put the item, or items agreement number will be coming over here automatically. So it's a A01. And then give a tab. It's $10 and then what happens? I will now uh, go for what 100 quantities. So once when I give a tab, you can now see the agreement number will be coming automatically. It's a supplier item combination. The agreement number is coming automatically over here. So I'll go for 100 quantities. I'll go for it. It's a thousand dollars. And then here, anything in the This is sufficient now. And then remember, we cannot make a payment at all to him. <clears throat> so once when he supplies it, what happens? It is a consigned item of the supplier action. So if you see, the payment option is what? Against the consumption advice only. It will be against the consumption advice only we can pay. Fine. We cannot pay it. If you go to the payables and try to make a payment for this order now, fine. Use 164957, it will not allow at all. So if you go there, you go to the schedules now, fine. Go to the schedules and then have a look at it. It is against the consumption advice only we can pay. How much you have consumed now, fine. Select it and then click on edit now, fine. The schedules you select and click on edit. And then go there and then see it now, fine. Click on it. And then you can see that what happens. Invoice match option is consumption advice, fine. Out of 100, if you let us say we have consumed 30, only for 30 becomes eligible for a payment. So only after consumption advice getting created, that consumption advice can only be paid, not the entire 100 quantities actually. So what, the consignment order is mostly given. So click on OK now. And then we have to give what the dates also. We have to give the dates also. So either the requested delivery date or formal delivery is a mandatory one. Click on it. I will not say today itself. I will it. And remember, the whole 100 quantities is now supplies quantity. So once when he supplies it, we will now receive it and then we will now keep it in the consigned inventory only. So the receipt routing has to be direct because it is not our material, it is the supplies material. And so what happens, you go there and then make the receipt routing as direct. You click on the link now. In the schedules, you go there and then make the receipt routing as direct. Direct delivery. The receipt routing must be direct. If it is a standard inspection, make a change to direct. Because we will not inspect anything at the gate at all. It is not ours. So it is a supplies item and so what happens, we will not do it. While transferring to the regular, we may even inspect it. When, apart from that, what happens, we will never inspect it when it crosses our gate actually. Click on OK now. And then go there. Click a save. Click on save. So by which order was it? The consignment order is not ready. Use 164957. And then we will not see who is going to approve. So click on, so click on the manager approvals. And we'll see who is going to approve. 164957 is not getting approved. For 100 quantities at a price of 10 actually. Now the supplier is going to supply the entire 100 quantities. And then he will now already have the stuff. And then the tent is already made. The, what happens, the area is now made within our premises. So once when it crosses the gate, the lorry driver will now keep it on the consigned inventory. And then you look at the, the girls who are here, they will now unload the material and then keep it on the shelf over there. It all belongs to him only. It will be normally an expense of inventory, right? Because it is not our, our stock and so it should not reflect in our asset, asset value at all. Asset valuation should not be there. So the sub inventory will be an expense of inventory. So go to the application developer and click on submit. And by submitting it, what happens, it gets submitted. You know, submitting it, now, click on it. So by which what happens? It will be getting up. 164957 is now getting approved actually. We had to wait for it. And then once when it is approved, 
you are not going to receive it. Thank you. I am not going to file it. I am not going to the manager orders. Thank you. This time, what happens is the approval approval process already the initial initiated. What happens? We cannot see it very fast. What is the place? I am not saying the US one one six four five nine five seven. Nine five seven. One six four nine five seven. So make a search. No, make a search. It will say it's an incomplete status now. The pending approval plan click on the high pending button. It will be getting approved fast. Approval information is currently available. It will take some time. In the meantime, what happens? You go there. I will not. What happens? You go to the place and click on it. You will not go to the receiving area and then you will not receive it. No, go there. So you will not go to the supply chain execution and go to the inventory management and then you will not perform a receipt for this one. 164.957 is the one. And go there. Click on it. And then yet, what happens? You go there. And then I will not bring it to the receipt area. Find what the receipt is. It is a consigned receipt, remember. It is not our reserve. Click on it. So click on the reserve. So the whole owner is of this is the only supplier actually. And then go there. Yes. One six four nine five seven is the one. Can give it up. Can give it up. But I am not saying not available. Find go there. So yes. One six four nine five seven is the one. Can go there. So make a search. It is not at approved, and so it is not coming at all. So we will wait for the purchase order to get approved. Now make a make a search. So click on search. You now wait for the PO to get approved now. And if you click on the hyperlink, what happens now? Some other error message will be coming. You know, the same error message. Will be that means what? Yeah. Now it's saying the application developer is approved and then what happens? The task has got completed. So it is on the whole approval process is now complete. Thank you. Now. now we can very well receive it now. Thank you. And then go there. And then if you have a look at it, find it will be open actually. And make a search again, find it will be open. Now we go to the receive expectation and then make a search, it will be available. It will be available. So select it and then click on OK now, fine, for which we are going to receive the entire 100 commodities. So click on search. Now. It's a direct receipt loading, fine, because I click on it, and then go to the receipt. Click on receipt. So it will be received and delivered in one go, actually. And remember, we had to put an expense of inventory. So some companies are very strict upon it because it is not our stock, and then go there. And then the sub inventory is a mandatory one. Property. But I am choosing one, any sub inventory, fine, click on it. I'm not choosing. You'll not see whether any consigned inventory is there or not. The vision might have created a consigned inventory and we'll see whether it is there or not. We'll not drop it on this. It's not our stock. And then we will not create a separate sub inventory for the supplier actually. We'll be getting a separate sub inventory. Uh, we're not there at all. We're not done at all. So inspection. I will not keep it on the inspection. Okay? I will not click on the show result quantity. It will not show the entire component quantities. So pick on show. Not showing. Thank you. So we had to create a separate expense sub inventory which, which will be the name of the supplier actually. Okay? The name of the supplier. And then so click on get up. So in one go, the entire 100 quantities will be received at the gate and then it will be delivered to the sub inventory. Click on it. The GR number is not me. So, so click on it. The shipment number is what? 123. The packing slip number is what? 456. The shipment number, whatever is applicable. I will not say there are three packs are available here. This is the variable number. And then bill of lading, jingle check on And then give the appropriate notes also. And then click on submit. So these are all value additions to the GR and actually then click on submit. So by which whatever the GR number gets created. So the GRN number gets created actually. So five two six two zero is the GRN number. Fine, five two six zero. So move. So click on the fine. Now we go there and then have a look at the stock. We'll go and look at the stock. We'll now bring it to the inventory area and go to the inventory area and then we'll now have a look at the stock. So click on the manage item quantities and then we'll have a look at the stock. Item is what A zero one and then give a tap. There is a cons item on fine click on search. So if you click on search, what I want to be showing you. Right? Expand it. It will show you in which org it is there. No, and then we are not click on it. We are not keep it in the inspection sub inventory. It will also show you. So sub inventory is inspection. Then click on it. Now what happened? The consigned inventory will be coming. Consign will be coming automatically. So click on the consign details. It will not show you who is the owner for the hundred. So the warning party is this. He is the warning party. He is the side actually. The receipt is this. Now he is the owner. Now we are decided that what happens, we will not draw some 20 quantities from the consigned inventory for our manufacturing action. So for, we are going to perform a transport regular action. So let us not perform a transport regular by which what happens, the 20 quantities are consumed. It may be taking after a week's time action. So whenever you need permits, that is what the just in time concept is there. Whenever you need it, you draw because raw material is readily available, whereas you are not the owner, and so we don't pay at all. Only what we are transferred for which only we will not get a consumption advice and pay. So it's a beautiful concept, and many suppliers also will now agree for the late what happens the consumption actually. They yes, supply it only after 15 days or 30 days only you're going to receive it because we are now giving him a assurance that what happens within the next three months or six months we will be consuming a problem. Transfer will be approximately five thousand quantities or six thousand quantities or something like that. 
So that will be the negotiation which will be happening between the supplier and us now. How much you're going to transfer on the next period now? On the, on the three months or four, six months actually. So if it is going to be a sizable one, then he will agree for to be a consigned supplier actually. Then what it happens. And then go there. Now what I'm going to do is I will not make what? Yeah, uh, transfer to regular now. Michael Gordon. So out of which whatever they go, the hundred is there. So entire hundred quantities belongs to him now. Michael Gordon will now perform a transfer to regular now. So click on done now, fine. We are going to perform a transfer to regular action. So you click on it, fine, go there. And then here, on the consigned inventory, what happens, we can say create transfer to regular, kind of won't actually. It is basically, transfer to regular is the way in which it is. The evil is now showing. So evil says what? Transfer to regular. Here it says transfer to won't now. So once when you transfer it to won't, what happens, it will not go to any other sub inventory, but it will now remain on the same sub inventory. Only thing is what? It will now cross the Lakshman Rekha. So anything which crosses the Lakshman Rekha, if Sita crosses, what happens? She is mine actually. Similarly, any material crosses the Lakshman Rega, it is ours actually. <laughs> Fine. So on the same sub inventory only. No go there. So go to the create transfer to owned transaction. Fine, click on it. So click on plus. We are going to create on the same sub inventory. So what is the item? I will not go on and put item. A01 and then give it app. The item will be coming. So we can even put the other factors also, then make a search. So I'm putting it in one of them. And then choose is he the owner of it now? Fine, click on it. He's not saying who is the owner now. Fine, click on it. So he's the one, the owning party is what is the one now. Fine. So it is in the inspection. Fine, click on apply and then click on okay. By which happens, sir? We are now creating a consumption entity. They are transferred to own, transfer to own. So the transfer to owned is now getting made now. You're not making the transfer to own now. So go there. So click on it. So we are now going to transfer 20 quantities. Now, once when you transfer it, he becomes the owner only for 80 quantities. Now. So click on submit now, fine. So the transfer to own transaction is now made. It becomes eligible for a consumption advice, but not today, only tomorrow. Your transaction process with no issues, now I click on it. And then if you go there and then make a search on the item quantities, click on it, and the quantities. So here, he owns only 80, it will not show. Even though we have a total stock of 100, he only owns 80 now. Thank you for it. So click on search. Go there. So here, what happens? It's not showing a total on it. And then if you go there and then click on the consign details now, thank you for it. Expand it. The consignment will be coming, effectively, when it's not coming. Minimize it. And then you expand it. Keep a cursor, you know, you must see the consignment inventory. So click on it and then make a search and click on it. So again, what happens? They give us search and find click on search. The consignment it does. Click on the item details. Sorry. The sub inventory is inspection. Print on it. It's not coming yet. I don't know where it's. I will not or I was open one more tab region of click on duplicate. Sometimes what happens it'll be giving Nakara now. So go to the supply chain equation, go to the inventory management, and then query for it. Go to the manage item quantities and go that on it. And then go and then query for the item. Find A01 and then give it app. Mm -hmm. So click on search and find click on search. And then expand it. Expand it. Okay, because it's no problem. The consent data is now is coming. The new tab region is coming. Thank you for it. You can now see he is the owner only for 80 quantities, even though the stock is under. Now, if I try to create a consumption advice, it will not create anything at all. You will not you will now write to create a consumption advice. Now, today it will not create. Click on it. I will not go there. I will not go to the tools and then try to create a consumption advice. Go to the tools and then will not go to the what's called schedule process because the waiting time is the aging period is one day actually. Aging between so click on the streaming process. I will now say create consumption advice. Create cons. So create consumption advice. Click on it. <clears throat> so go there. So we'll now pass on the parameter supply is what A01 and then give a tab now. The supply site, or when you go there, drop it down and then put the supply site, click on search. And then make a search and you know, click on it. The site one now, click on OK. And then we can even display the lot and serial numbers, group by transaction type, find all these things we can enable. So we are not trying to create a consumption advice or whatever has been consumed, but it will now work only tomorrow. Because the aging period is one day actually. So tomorrow we will now go and create the consumption advice. Now we will now say no record phone. So it will also create a report also. 
when the consumption advice report also will be coming. We can even see the report also. But now, nothing will be there actually. So no consumption is possible. Whatever has been transferred is now becoming eligible for a payment only tomorrow because of the aging period actually. So print consumption advice report is also running. Search for it. Search for it. Search for it. Ready? And then no running, running, running. So once it is completed, it can very well print this report actually. You know, such a print product to it. Print consumer report. There's a report, it can very well republish it actually. A report can be very well republished. The bottom one of is becoming a report. Any reports can be republished of Frankly Connect. They can very well republish. And then you will see there will not be any data found at all in the output area. But if I click on the republish, I'm going to export to what? PDF book. I click on the PDF. So open this advice now. I click on it. Say no data phone. Nothing is there. So tomorrow when you run the consumption advice, it will be available. But in EVIS, we can very well create the consumption advice today itself. But I don't know. There may be some things which will be available. Yeah, tell me now. Anything? You want to say the mic is on actually. So this is on the consumption advice, and then we will now create this consumption advice tomorrow. Consumption advice report. Okay, sir. Okay. So bye for now, and then we will now meet tomorrow, and then we will now create the consumption advice. Bye, bye. Sir. bye. <clears throat>so the consigned process is the one right let me open it up let me open the consigned process so the biggest advantage of a consigned inventory is what we don't pay for what we buy it so he is a consigned supplier so he has already supplied 1000 quantities into his consigned sub inventory actually is an expense sub inventory it will be there and then we don't pay any paisa at all for this and then only when you transport a regular there is when you are going to consume it so this is called we are going to use now. upon using then we will now get the consumption advice and then we will now run the pay on the and then afterwards what happens? We will now do the payables invoice and then make a payment action. So whatever you consume or we call them as what? Transfer to stock. In EBS it is known as a transfer to regular stock whereas in Fusion it is known as a transfer to owned actually. So we perform the transfer to owned and then whatever items which has crossed the Lakshman Reka becomes eligible for a payment action. So this is what is fine. So now 200 has been what happens? Drawn. Fine. It has been drawn out of 1,000. Fine. So out of 1,000 quantities, what happens? And say they call them as what? It is now delivered to us. Out of 1,000, they have delivered 200 to us actually. So we will now go on and first of all, look at the supplier portal now. Now go there. Now have a look at the supplier portal. So go there. I will now go to what? The supplier portal. A1.n1 now. Give it a tab. So we will now go on the login as a supplier portal. Now supplier is now logging in now. So we will now go there. So let the supplier log in now. He is now logged in, fine, A1.n1. So he is now signing in. So he will now have a look at the supplier portal. He will be in a different place actually. So we are in Bombay and then he is in Delhi already. So click on the home icon in the top. So go, there, go to the supplier portal and click on the supplier portal and then he will now click on the supplier portal. Now he can very well look at the manage orders. Fine, from his, from his login, what happens, he can click on the manage orders. He can have a look at it, fine, click on search, fine, click on search. So once when you search for it, the only order which has been placed on him will be coming up over here. The only place, only one order on him. So for this, 1000 has been ordered now. When click on the hyperlink on the order. So click on the hyperlink on the order. It's now closed for receiving because it has been received fully actually. So ordered is this and then we have received it and then only 200 is delivered actually. Fine, 200 is only delivered. If you click on the view it is fine. Click on view it is. So the entire 1000 was in the stock market of that account. So you can now see the receipt number. Find the receipt number for which you are done now. So go there, click on it. Shipment number one, two, three. The packing slip number, everything is coming. Fine. And then nothing has been done. It has been received. 
and then in the consigned inventory we have 800 stock and then it 200 has been delivered nothing has been invoiced in the open to invoice is 200 now the 200 can be invoiced actually so it has been received yesterday when we tried to create a consumption advice it was not coming and now today we can very well create a consumption advice so i'll go there and then get a, there is no invoice at all available click on that <laughs> And then here also one of the view close on click on it. So what happens? The click on done and then come out of it. And then we will know what happens. Login in our system. Take over it. So let us know login as PRC22. So take a copy. So let me go to what happens. Open a browser and then we will know login via. We will now run the create consumption device actually. Okay. The PRC22 dot store it. Welcome under it. So we log in as a PRC 22. You're logging in. So once we log in, we will now go there and then we will now click on it. So click on the home icon. So click on the home icon. We'll now go to the procurement. Fine, go to the procurement. And then you go to the purchase orders and then you go to the manage orders and then how will operate to. So click on it. We'll now go to the manage orders. So go to the manage orders. So orders created by PRC22. We are going to have a look at the click on it. There's only one order on this two click on it. So if you click on it, the order will be coming. <clears throat> so it's now closed for receiving now. Fine. Click on the hyperlink on the order and it will now have its inbuilt analytics actually. If you have embedded analytics available on every PO mm. on the right hand side. So this is embedded fine. This order. The same thing, what you have seen on the supply portal actually. Then click on the view details, you can now see everything. So you know then. So 200 is now uh, open to invoice actually. I will now go to the top and I'll now right click and then duplicate. I will now duplicate tab. Now we will now run the create consumption advice. So go there. We'll now go there. Go to the tools. Go to the tools and then go to the schedule process. Now it becomes eligible for creating the consumption advice because the wait period is one day now. Fine. And yesterday was the close cycle date. And so we can very well do it. And after close cycle, we had to wait for one day. So click on the schedule new process. Perfect. So I'll now say create cons. So create consumption advice is the one now fine. So click on OK. We're going to run it. And supplier, we can say is what is the A01 and then give it a happen. So supplier is coming and drop down and choose the site actually. So click on search. And then click on search. The site will be coming and select and then click on OK. And then uh, uh, if you're having a lot of serial numbers, you can include it and then group by transaction type and then and create consumption advice report also. You know. So click on submit. So we are now enabling everything. So the report will also be coming. Click on submit. So once we submit it, whatever the concurrent will be running for the create consumption advice. And this will automatically trigger an invoice. Remember, the create consumption advice will now automatically trigger an invoice. Actually, the invoice will be automatically triggered. Actually, so in the importing of the invoice will be automatically getting triggered. Once when the consumption advice is ready, actually. So it's totally automatic. There is no need for us to do anything at all. So the greater consumption advice itself will be triggering the import of the air. You can see import payables invoice is automatically running. So upon creating a consumption advice, the report is running, but the import payables invoice is coming automatically. It will be importing it automatically. And today only what happens is we are able to create the consumption advice actually. So the import is now succeeded. Right? So the invoice report is also coming up. I click on the import invoice. Now. So in the meantime, what I will now print the consumption advice report. Fine, click on it. The consumption advice report is now going to be printed. Fine, click on it. Choose it. And then since it is the report, we can very well republish it actually. So go click on it at the bottom. What happens? We can output, we can very well republish. Fine. So click on it. So we'll now republish the output actually. Mm -hmm. So click on the republish icon, and then we are going to republish it now. So click on the wheel icon and then go to export to PDF. Thank you on video icon and then export to PDF. We are exporting it on top and up and open it up. Double click on it and open the report. So you can now see the, the consumption advice is opening to actually. So the consumption advice number is coming. Find the business unit, find the initial date, find the supply site, you know the quants. So everything is there, org is 001. So, what is. so for 200 USD, what happens? The system has created it. So go that is what is. So is there one cons one fans on site cons item one transfer to one. So we are transferred to one for which what happened the invoice number has been created. Consumption quantity is 20 or 120 quantity has been 
So unit transition for which whatever. So this amount becomes eligible for a payment actually. So will I close it now? I don't know. I don't know. The consent is ready. Close the screen panel of not in order. And then if you go back to what I was the consigned order, and click on done, and, uh, uh, and then order life cycle pack, click on done. And then go the invoice now created, and go the click on done, and then requery it actually. You know, requery it, so click on search again. So once when you search for it, so you go there. And then click on the hyperlink of it, and then again click on the, uh, the, the info, information. Of it, the, so the info it is not coming, frankly, on it. So uh, it has got an inbuilt, what happens, info it, frankly, on view out. Intelligence. Intelligence. Is intelligence from for that. So you can now see that the receipt number is there. And then the invoice is 200. We have opened the invoice previously, it's 200. Now it is invoiced. And then on the bottom, we have the invoice. Right? If you click on the invoice, it's a use invoice, remember. So previously, what happens is that we are now seeing the pay on receipt now. So there is the ER as invoice. And then it is a use now. Right? It is called ER as a user, basically. Right? You click on the use invoice. So you can now see the invoice is now created, but nothing has been paid here. Paid is nothing actually. So if you go to the payments tab region, what happens? You won't find anything at all. So let us now pay the invoice actually. Now go there. Now go there. So click on it. We'll now pay the invoice now. Right click and then duplicate. And then we'll now go there. Go to the payables invoice and then we'll now make a payment actually. Since it is vision, we can very well pay now. Right click on it. So since we have enabled what pay and use, the system is creating the invoice automatically. And pay on the use is now creating it automatically. <clears throat> So go to the payables, now click on the payables, and then you go to the invoices, and then look at the invoice. So click on the invoice, and then you'll now look at the invoice. So click on the invoices, now, and payables invoices, we're opening up. And then we'll now query for the invoice, and then we will now validate the invoice, and then afterwards make a payment. Actually, since it is vision, everything is available, and we have made a check payment for the supplier actually while we are creating the supplier. So check payment allows you to make a payment actually. Otherwise, uh, the different ones has to be configured with the financial team for appropriate payment actually. A check payment is ready madely available for us to pay actually. <clears throat> so go to the payables and then go to the invoices. Since uh, this screen is now getting open for the first time, it is not taking a longer time actually to whatever. So open the page now. <clears throat> So this is called the what's called the consigned inventory. It is a beautiful concept, and many many industries are doing it now. And many many industries are doing it now. In uh, Tamil Nadu, we have one uh, uh, TNPL, fine Tamil Nadu Paper uh, Paper Works Limited, fine. So Tamil Nadu Papers is also using the same consigned inventory. So, but what happens is that beyond the battery limit, the supplier will not be allowed to go and then uh, whatever they make his own shed actually. So. The, it is a government company, and so what happens is they themselves have created the inventory, and then they are putting their own stock only to maintain the stocks. And then uh, whenever they draw it, what happens is they communicate to suppliers that what happens is we have now done the transfer to own. So since it's a government company, every supplier believes them because they won't cheat at all. And they won't cheat at all. And so what happens is they left even the stock maintenance to the company itself because the rule says that as per the government law, what happens we cannot allow the third party to come and then maintain what happens a place within our premises basically. So they have done it, and then uh, what happens? It is now maintained within the lock and key of the company. It's a TNPL only. TNPL is making it, and then doing it. So the consigned inventory concept is now being practiced in many, many ways because it is an excellent one, because it is a just-in-time concept, because we don't pay for what we ordered, actually. We ordered 1,000, we don't pay at all. Fine. It comes into this, into this inventory, and then whatever we own it, fine. it is called transfer to own. What happens? We don't <clears throat> so in the pay on receipt, what happens is now running automatically. Upon consumption advice, enables we have to run it manually. So here, what happens? It is no automatic actually. And then the payables open invoice is, is a, basically a EBIS document. It is not a payables open interface. Fine. Everything is now getting automated, totally automated upon consumption advice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So click on it. It's still going on, going on. Fine. <laughs> it is not coming at all. No, it's so. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me go there and then see on the other one. Okay. I will not try to. What happens? It opened up in another browser actually. Or otherwise, what happens? You know, go to uh, an edge browser. Fine, click on done now. Fine. And then here, what happens? You know, go there. Log out and then I will not log in here. No. Fine, click on sign it. I will not log in my PRC 22. No. Fine, click on it. So click on confirm. In the edge browser, I will not directly go on and do it. Fine, click on it. So it is on PRC 22. No. PRC 22. Student. Fine, click on sign it. <laughs> So we'll now go to the payables and then we'll now try to open the fine. Click on the home icon on the top. So click on the home icon. Mm 
go to the payable slope. Go to the payable slope, go to the invoices. No, thank you for the invoices. Not see whether we can slow up on the invoice or not. Bitcoin V. So we are waiting for it. Let me know whatever they will stop the record. Now. Stop. So I will now click on the task list and then I go to what? Manage invoices. I click on the manage invoices. And then how will it affect the The supplier or body is what? A01 and then give it up. The supplier will be coming. Then click on search. It will now show you the invoice which has been created for the supplier. So we can even choose how many periods, not fine, three days is okay. Just know only it is created. So click on go now, final note coming. So go there. So is a use invoice, I will not click on the hyperlink on the use invoice. It is not validated. Approval is not required for this because it is not done for the third system, either system. So go to actions and then here automatically you go there and then go to validate. You're going to validate. So the invoice gets validated. And now you're going to make a payment to the supplier actually. Validate. Now go to the actions and then here automatically they pay in full. So $200, you're going to make a payment. So click on it. So, but we had to wait for one day. That is the biggest problem. I mean, 200 plus all the taxes put together is $19. No, fine, go there. I will not choose the Bank of America account. No. BO if you go for account. And then the payment process profile, drop it down. I will not choose what the standard check format is there. Standard. So, standard check. Because we are given a check as a payment method. No, fine, click on it. So, remit to account, fine, drop it down. It will be remitted to the account. Okay, click on search. It is not required. Remit account is not required because the supplier's account, bank account has not been registered on this. Now, click on the payment document and drop it down. And then check stock A. Fine, there's the one. You're going to use it. Fine, this is the payment number. Fine, click on submit. 4030. Fine, click on submit. By which order? Answer. The payment will be processed by a check payment, actually. It will be a stub, actually, with the payment advice and then check put together on this. One. So, payment has been created, actually. Your payment now we will not post the check to the supplier actually. So no valid and go that corner. And then here what happens? You will go there. So we'll not post to ledger now. Fine. And click on the post ledger. So by doing it, what happens? It gets what happens? Accounted also. Thank you it. So click on the post ledger. We'll be posting it to ledger also. So since all the periods are already open in mission, actually. So posting in ledger is also very much possible. So we can very well post it. And then it'll be running a concurrent for posting it actually. So once when this activity is now completed, we can now see it's validated as well as uh, paid also for all the activities. So if you go there, click on it. You know how I'll open it. Click on it. You know, log out and then log in as a supplier portal. Click on it. You know, log in as a supplier portal actually. Yeah. Unable to go out on it. So sometimes the yeah, the accounting has been completed. Now view accounting. If you click on the view accounting, it will show all the accounting also in this place. So accrual, fine. So accrual is debited and then what happens? The liability has been credited. So accrual to liability or the accounting entries, and then there's the uh, taxes and other things. You go to click on down. And then you go to actions and then click on the, uh, what happens? You click on the validated account. If you click on the hyperlink on the validated, you can now see it's paid also. It is validated, it is accounted, and then paid also. Payment is not done on this one. Fine, $219 has been paid actually. The whole thing is has been paid. So, but unfortunately, what happens? We are unable to see on this no bank account. It's not coming out of it. So here itself, what happens? I will log in as what the supplier and then have a look at. Or we can even go via purchase order and then have a look at. So suppliers log in also we can see. Or otherwise, what happens? You know, go to the purchase orders and then have a look at. Some problem in the system. I click on the procurement and then I go to the purchase orders and then I will not look at the purchase order. So the inbuilt analytics will not take you. It is the embedded analytics. So the embedded analysis will tell you what, what all has been done on this. So click on the hyperlink or there's no fine, click on it. You can now see, previously it was only up to delivered, no fine. Delivered and then there's no invoice also. Previously ordered and then 200 has been delivered and then 200 is also invoice. So click on the view dates. The embedded analytics will now give you a lot of information, no fine, click on it. And then the bottom, what happens there? We have got an invoice, it's now validated and then this much has been paid actually. So if you click on the hyperlink of it, click on the hyperlink of it. And then you go to the payments tab region, you can now see the payments information also. So this way it works. Many, many companies are using this consigned concept in a different, different ways, actually. Mm -hmm. right. So I told you in DNPL, uh, our the company, the Tamil Nadu paper mills will now be keeping the uh, 
what happens the lock and key of the consent inventory they will not allow others to what happens uh, go on and do anything at all uh, so because of the government company so a third party cannot uh, do any operations inside their premises actually but uh, supplier believes that what happens you'll always be doing properly so they don't have any problem in uh, what happens uh, with the, the company itself keeping all the keys even though they are not paid if it is not paid it is all belongs to what happens uh, then now <clears throat> So this com completes what the consigned inventory actually. So I will now stop the record at this stage now. <clears throat>